Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a happy Tuesday morning as Big Blags Vlad has stepped into the arena, maybe saving Bitcoin, potentially saving Bitcoin. And let's get into the live scene right over here. As always, wishing the best of the best possible days that you could ever have in your good old life. Anyways, let's get into the charts right now. Bitcoin on lower time frames, or sorry, not on lower time frames, but on the daily right over here, still looking very, 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 very corrective. Now, there's a, quite a few things to be aware of right over here. With the uh, pump that we had yesterday on Bitcoin, it actually does look to me like it like it wants to give another try higher. It certainly would not put anything out of order to actually take a stab at this 3750 resistance right over here, the 21 exponential. And overall, I am paying special attention to the two day dollar chart right over here. As overall, we are still getting the two day stokes, which have just gotten another tick, are actually gaining momentum to the downside. So to me, the action of yesterday, uh, putting into confluence with what the volume signature was and the overall shape of this guy, not taking out any sort of major uh, supports or resistances, um still quite still quite corrective still quite overall you know bearish as uh, lower highs and lower lows for the for over a year is well <laughs> well it's not necessarily the most bullish thing of all time i've ever seen anyways uh, dmx adx <laughs> dmi adx it's going to be a rough ride over here as well because we've got a new tick on this and it's actually given a full-on short signal now here's the thing though is it time to fomo in of course this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor and I actually have no position right now but what i can say is is that when we are looking at a higher time frame like this, like a two-day little chart, remember you can actually get a nice little run up and perhaps even test this uh, this 10 simple moving average right over here, which would be putting it around that 3750-ish mark, and it still wouldn't you know fuck anything around too much. And overall, when looking at these guys right over here, uh, you could still maintain this overall bearish posturing on not only the DMI but also the Stokes that we just looked at right over here. Which again, on that new tick, we are still gaining momentum to the downside. That should be a big tell, not only. That, not only that, but RSI over here, uh, still playing out the hidden bearish divergence, I believe, as uh, you at this point and this point right over here, making a higher high while while price action makes a lower high in the overall context of a downtrend. And typically speaking, it'll pop back down to the lower portion of this bearish control zone uh, as it kind of flirts around with the uh, with the exponential on that guy. So overall, you know, could we have another move up uh, and, and test this 3750 a share, maybe even 3800, 3850, something like that? Uh, very possible, very possible. But the play and what I'm really trying to get out here is that I'm looking for the next short. And I think this becomes a little bit more obvious when we look at uh, Mr. Buterall, Mr. Litecoin, which we'll get to. Uh, relatively soon, but I do want to wrap up Bitcoin and, and go down to the lower time frames. Let's go over here to maybe an hourly and let's start charting this bitch out. So Sorry, actually, first things first, you know what? Let's give the bulls their due diligence because it's the right thing to do. But uh, but basically, what are the bulls looking at right now? Well, actually, you're going to see a lot of people start to talk about a potential uh, uh, falling channel, which typically is a more bullish result, bullishly resolved pattern. Now, do I think that this plays out? No, absolutely not. The price action and the overall um, and the overall signature of this, especially with regards to the volume, is not is is not supportive of that. But you're going to see people talk about this. So it's you know, it's, you know, you should always, you, you, I mean, it's just, it's just a good idea to understand what the, what the rest of the market is, uh, is thinking. What I think is more obvious and what I think is more uh, likely to happen is something like this. Remember, we still are in the midst of playing this out and this is still very much valid. This, uh, th this, um, symmetrical triangle right over here, which does have a measure move all the way down to our prior of uh, around our prior, prior lows at around uh, 3,300 ish area down around here. So we haven't quite got there just yet. And as long as Bitcoin is essentially below this 30, 3750-ish mark, uh, that is that is very much in play, meaning that the measure move off this symmetrical triangle is in play. Now, if you are looking at this as a, I guess I guess you'd be calling this a bull flag. Um, there would be a measure move to be taken off, to be taken off that. Let's actually just play around and see if it you know see if it makes sense with anything else. Again, I do not believe that this is going to happen, but it is you know you, you should you, I mean it's, it's right it's the right thing to talk about this. Um, 4850. So fair enough. Uh, you're going to hear the bulls talk. Uh, you know the the uh, the bulls have something once again. The Inverted Quasimodo, not necessarily working out. The inverted flyer fire, also a dud. Big bags Vlad, though, he has stepped into the arena and put in the bull flag. So, again, looking at this guy right over here, um, you know, is, is that a possibility? Is that a potential if we're looking at it like this? Uh, yeah, but again, you know, to be very, very clear, I do not believe that this is going to happen. And uh, again, the difference between an analyst and someone, you know, and someone who just, uh, you know, your, your random social media analyst who just searches up a few days of uh, Investopedia and someone who's been doing this for, for quite a long time. Uh, this is not the way that you get this because you really need to be incorporating this whole formation over here. This 
this whole area is much more obvious in, in, in the way that I'd be looking at this. And uh, you have this very, very orderly drop off in volume. That's your key signature of corrective price action, which is what we're looking at going all the way over here. Again, taking everything off and just looking at this as a naked chart, all of our higher time frames, you know, your 12 hour, we are still respecting the 21 exponential as resistance. Doesn't mean it can't get taken out, but as long as we're below this and as long as we have this cross of the 21 and the 55 right over here, that to me is just a retest of that cross, a, a relatively powerful cross, which actually is gaining momentum away from each other after snaking around consulting for a while over here, which we saw in our symmetrical triangle. So telling the story of this price action actually is very important. And that is why the deeper understanding of what these sorts of things mean and confluence with each other is, you know, is pretty imperative to, to to get otherwise you're just going to be drawing fucking you know shapes and symbols everywhere and thinking that you know bitcoin's going to fucking six thousand next week anyways <laughs> probably not going to happen um anyways uh overall you know as long as bitcoin is essentially re respecting this guy's resistance could the big play be right here right now well i'll actually present a case for that and it'll be better round out by by mr beaterall and miss and mrs uh, litecoin over there um but, but uh but for now you know I it does feel to me, and very rarely do you see one of these kind of like Barty up moves that doesn't get, you know, at least a little bit of a follow through. Um, if you are going to have a good stop punch, you really want to, you know, you want to, well, you got to wipe out these people right over here, which have we already done that? I mean, you know, a couple weeks above this guy right over here. Very possible, actually. You know what? The more and more that I look at this, the more, you know, the more and more potential it could be. Um, but if we do if we do this on an hourly right over here, this guy that we were looking at yesterday actually still holding back price action. Um, in fact, the hourly getting it, not bad at all. So this form of resistance going all the way back over there, still relevant. Um, and you can see that as long as we're, you know, essentially respecting this guy. Yeah, I mean, it could, it could very easily fall down. You do have your hourly stokes headed, headed south right now, gaining momentum to the downside in constant fluence with our higher time frames the daily two day and i believe the three day has not crossed just yet but we will get a new tick tonight four hour uh stokes getting you know pretty pretty high up there but again does just because it's high does not mean it you know just does not insinuate that it's a, a you know immediately going to turn down i need to see it cross and then get out of the critical zone more importantly and then and then even more important than that to get out of the bullish control zone uh which is what a lot of people get wrong they will look at this and say hey it's getting really fucking high can't go high bro better short. So again, uh, when looking at this, th this is actually suggesting that the move continues. Um, let's go, let's go check out an eight hour. Yeah. Eight hours still, still, still getting up there. And I believe 12 hours, a fresh cross, but not getting out of the critical zone to the downside. So same sort of logic does apply. But again, the, the higher time frames are where the, is, is where the damage is done, especially in these longer periods of consolidation, which I believe that we're in again, looking at the volume characteristics of this, that is the signature that we're essentially getting, uh, daily Stokes still gaining momentum to the downside downside about to get into the critical zone two day as we just looked at before still gaining momentum to the downside in three day we'll get a new tick tonight and we are losing momentum as we get into the into the neutral zone so if it were to get rejected from the neutral zone and head back down that would be your next big signal or at least my next big signal is again it's not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor by the way three day uh three day uh dmi adx is actually giving you a fresh uh, sell signal as well uh rough riders unite and uh, what about the daily i'm curious yeah daily's not really telling you too much daily is consolidation right here which is kind of interesting right you know your daily's not giving you a signal your two day three day and perhaps weekly yeah weekly is actually giving you a signal as well funnily enough um but uh, but all lower time frames in a daily are actually not giving you a signal at least all the way up to an to a one hour. So when looking at this current price action and, and looking at the uh, the reaction that we got last night, it's telling you that that uh, that this this uh, this move yesterday was not very strong. Which you know you could get that from just uh, taking everything off and looking at your volume characteristics down around here. This volume, if looking at an hourly dildo, was about uh, uh, we need we need to go to a bit Mexico to, to really do this accurately. Um, was about 189 million, which is not, that's not much. Um, to put that in perspective, like a dildo like this over here, which is typically what, which is kind of like the going rate on, on like a, uh, on a breakdown or breakout. This was about 350, 350 million done in one hour. And again, another three, uh, another 350 done right over here or, or around that. So when you're doing, you know, a little bit less than again, what was that like 150 or 200? Yeah. hundred, 190 ish area. That's not like a market momentous shifting move. To me, it's more corrective and probably more indicative of a stop hunt. But it doesn't mean that you can't get another try. You know, maybe in this area, 3,700, 3,750 would be a little bit more obvious. And I'd really, 
I, I, I am trying to be patient holding out for that area. Um, however, you know, whichever one happens first, whether it's 3750 or whether we break back below 3600, uh, that's going to be my next signal for an actual trade. Um, as I, you know, it, a lot of things are starting to present themselves. A lot of, you know, the stars are starting to align for a nice trade, but they're not quite in place just yet. So a little bit of patience here. Um, and uh, going through them, you know, you can see the lower time frames, you know, obviously giving you signals, but the high, but the middle time frames, everything from like a four hour to a daily is just telling you more of the same consolidation. So when when I see that the ADX, and by the way, the ADX on the hourly is actually now fully fully faded, um, as it's not no longer that solid white, uh, is telling us that th this move right over here not really doing anything, which does really help around out the overall analysis of this. So again, um, you know, to me, the question is, where am I looking for for that next sell? Uh, overall, you know, we have lower highs after lower highs for the last over a year, quite bearish. So I'm happy to be looking for a trade in that direction. Overall, uh, sorry, not I keep on using overalls. Po apologies about that. But uh, but what I'm looking at right over here is this price action is is getting is giving you this rounded over price action, right? That is usually never a good sign either. But again, you know, it could it could very easily take a stab up a little bit higher. My point is is that again the setup is revealing itself, but is it fully in place? I would say probably not probably not um or at least as far as a trader i'd want to see uh, i don't want to take a trade right here again i want to take a trade either if it breaks 3600 or if it gets a little bit higher that's what i'd be a lot more interested in doing um so i believe i've covered what i probably want to say about uh, bitcoin is a is a jewel telling us anything on our uh, on our other time frames jewel was the only indicator that actually got that uh, that actually told you to long before that nice little pump yesterday by the way um and of course, I mean, the jewel just, the jewel, I don't know what it is about the jewel. It just gets things right. It's just, it's, it's magical. Um, again, I shouldn't even say that because I don't, <laughs> don't want people running with that assumption. Uh, jewel on the eight hour also giving you the signal as well. What about the 10 hour right over here? 10 hours actually going to give you a fresh signal, but is this, is this the perfect signal that I'm looking for? Um, Perhaps, I mean, the last time you got a signal like this was right over here, so fair enough. But again, 10 hour, looking at my exponentials, uh, and especially the 10 hour and 12 hour, we did just get that, not just get that, but a little bit, uh, what was this, like last week, a few days ago, um, got this uh, nasty exponential movement average cross right over here. So as long as we're still respecting the 21 exponential uh, as resistance, and, and again, looking at the volume uh, behind this last move, does it get held right here? Do we get another wick above and then close below the 21? That would also be a signal as well. So multiple ways to skin this cat. Uh, don't definitely do not skin cats because it's like, you know, illegal. And also, you know, they're like, they're nice. <laughs> but but fair enough. Looking at this guy right over here, there is going to be a trade sh revealing itself relatively soon, I would say. So this is one of the days where I'll be glued to my computer screen. Um, not necessarily fully convinced it happens from right here though uh again there's it's the the stars haven't fully aligned but uh i believe within the next within like the next 24 to 48 hours probably going to get a big uh, a big signal and that also really comes into confluence with mr Buterall over here as his event his, his the big event the big event for mr Buterall is coming in on i believe the 16th or or, or uh what's it called predicted for the 16th as it's you know it's not necessarily a date but it's a block number Number. Um, but over here, I do want to get to Mr. Buterall and Mr. Litecoin uh, relatively faster than, uh, than, uh, than I usually do. And the reason for that is because Mr. Buterall does have a very obvious pattern of distribution going on over here. Not only did we put in a beautiful Wyckoff distribution top right over here, but now coming back down to your prior low of this potential neckline of a, of a regular head and shoulders, uh, also bouncing off the 618 Fibonacci retracement and coming up to the 382. Is it, are we in the making of putting on a right shoulder? Now I'm doing something that I really dislike. I really dislike and I make fun of a lot of the time where you know people will will draw on things before they're like quite literally there. But uh, we do have the we do have all the things in the making so far. We do have the volume characters are I mean you've this very lovely and very uh, obvious drop off in volume and this you know that uh, that 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 orderly drop off in volume right. Um, 
very potential, uh, potentially um, great and well-defined neckline right over here with an event that typically comes with event psychology. What happens during an event? Well, you know, the, the, the bigger accounts who have been driving up price, causing the FOMO, causing the less sophisticated investors um, to feel that emotional, you know, drive of, oh my God, we have an event, the world's going to change, all, all, all the problems of the world are solved, so you better get long Mr. Buterall. Well, now you have some buyers for that. And you see the same sort of signer, signature on Mr. Buterall as you do on Mr. Bitcoin. You're still being held back by this cross right over here and still respecting the, the 21 as resistance. Sorry, let's go to the 12 hour. I think it's a little bit more, a uh, little bit better. Um, yeah, same thing right over here. In fact, if this area does get rejected, you will get that cross right here and this will be the sell. So this is a counterpoint to what I'm saying on Bitcoin and essentially saying this is probably gonna happen sooner rather than later, um, which, is is why I'm going to be glued to my computer screen for the rest of the day. Uh, daily right over here, same sort of thing. In fact, the daily over here gave you a negation of this cross. Remember, this cross right over here typically does have some pretty hefty, uh, you know, results. You know, especially for Mr. Buterall. The last time that you had the bullish version of that cross was literally right over here during this bull trap. Um, but e e even there, you know, it was, it was a nice 40% fucking move. I, I mean, 40% move. And the time before that, it, you know, the last time they had that cross was right over here, which was quite literally like, I mean, uh, this is going to be insane, like a four, almost a 400% move. So again, it has been, you know, on the on the bearishly uh, on the bear side on that cross uh, for ages and with this red dildo party being started right over here Mr. Darth, Darth Maul showing his face and showing his uh, red dildos well that to me is just like what we've been looking at from Mr. Bitcoin with the four hour uh, with the four hour dildo death cross so th this is not a death cross I feel like I've been misheard on this a lot as well people are like calling every cross a death cross now no it's not it's only the 50 and the 200 um but hey, you know you're fair. It's it's fair enough. You can call it whatever you want, whatever you want, man. I'm not I'm not here to be the fucking tentacle analysis police. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, you know by by basically negating, sorry, by by basically almost showing a bullish cross of this as you know price action essentially approaches a top and then sells right into it again gives us resolution on what the bots and the algorithms of this market are doing they're selling into that it was a trap essentially it was a fucking trap uh it's a trap and and now coming back down again getting looking at the volume uh characteristics in confluence with where we are in relation to all these exponentials um and, uh, and essentially the shape of this this is an overall pattern of distribution in the way that i look at it with several rejections now the question is, where does this next rejection likely come in around? I mean, obviously, you cannot tell price action what to do. But if you do see another rejection, whether it's whether we already had it right here or if you get another, you know, if you get another long wick up to the upside right over here, that will be a great and phenomenal signal, especially with, again, the event coming in the next day or two. Uh, four hour dildo chart right over here actually hinting at a death cross as well. Um, if price action is unable to get back above 135, it will get death cross. So, you know, you do see see defense or, or sorry you do see the bears selling the 200 right over here so again the question is do we get another try up before that actually gets crossed if that gets if that does indeed get crossed before the next try that's going to be another signal so as you can see this is a very nuanced scenario right here but you can see the stars start to align but again it's not necessarily time to be taking a position at least, at least for me of course it's not financial advice I'm not a financial advisor go fuck yourself SEC leave me alone but <laughs> but what I can say is you know if I'm I'm just giving my sort of personal view on this and um and, and i'm telling you exactly what i'm doing right now it's it's i have my finger near the button but it's not quite there just yet you don't know if you're gonna get that uh, that next run and also what if that next run actually does confirm above and completely negates that and then you know it, and then it's you know all golden skies ahead well possible i think it's extremely unlikely but uh but hey it is possible and that's why you know it's best to wait right now um so again if this is going to work out i mean <laughs> you want to see something crazy this looks very similar to something that we saw not too long ago on a chart over here right uh this is spies by the way remember you know left shoulder head or right shoulder so you know, it's it does have the it really does look fucking similar, man. We'll get to spy a little bit later. Uh, I want to actually look at Litecoin and then uh, and then 
XRP and maybe even Stellar today too. Uh, but but higher time frames over here on the on the weekly. Uh, just coming back up and testing the 10 simple moving average on the weekly. Uh, so far living above, but uh, I would imagine that by end of week, probably you know if it does end below, that's also going to be another signal. Again, you can see the stars aligned, but it's not quite there. It's just it's, you're not getting the full on signals just yet. I mean, what if it does close here higher? Well, then no signal. In fact, uh, it's not necessarily a long signal. Uh, but by, by the same token, um, but uh, just looking at the oscillators right over here, yeah, not really. I mean, again, even off the move yesterday, you're not getting any sort of signals on this. What about a daily? Uh, daily, yeah, daily consolidation. What about two day? Two day, um, giving you a little bit of a trend, but uh, but no. I mean, for the more aggressive DMX rough riders out there, they will look at this as a short signal. I would not um three day over here three day actually is giving you a full-on short signal uh and a really beautiful one at that would like to see the next tick on the d uh, on the adx right over here um we will get that one later tonight at 7 p.m eastern yeah 7 p.m eastern time as you will get a new three-day dildo over here but so far that is a full-on signal and this one very rarely lies as you can see any times that it anytime that it flashes white all the way down around here and the and the pink is above the uh this dotted trend line right over here that is a signal except this one over here did not did not work out but that was all the way over here when you were in consolidation we are in consolidation over here but this is a bearish consolidation that was a bullish that was an ascending triangle this is this just looks like look just this just looks like distribution not only that but keep in mind that you do have the three-day dollar death cross right over here and still respecting the 21 as resistance in fact this is this is to be looked at as just a trap right over here as quickly being negated you know again um not not necessarily a big fan anyways if this is going to be head and shoulders which I, again I'm, I'm doing something that i think is really really bad um you know just kind of telling price action or, or suggesting price action before it really happens technically speaking there would be a measure move to be made off this uh, i think i've already done it yeah yeah right over here um and let's apply that to the neckline again it needs to it needs to actually break 117 on a higher time frame preferably a, you know at least a, at least a four hour but preferably higher uh, if we go all the way back on over here where does this point all the way down towards well that would be right in this like 69 to $70 range, but I'm just gonna say 69 because that's a better number. Anyways, um, that is your Mr. Butyrol right over there. As long, essentially, as long as it's closing, uh, as long as it's closing higher level dildos below 150, that is actually the way that I'd be looking at this guy. But as you can see, it can, you know, it has plenty of room to kind of play around with. And uh, so again, not necessarily the right time. Uh, Mr. Litecoin over here, Mr. Prince Coin, Mrs. Mrs. Coin, um, whatever the fuck you want to call her. Again, same thing over here. Uh, higher time frames. Uh, what what was I looking at over here? I think I just I think I deleted all my trend lines. Yeah, yeah. So taking every you know we can just completely redo this one. You know, taking everything off again. It's it's, it's almost like a it's almost like the same chart as Mr. Beater actually getting rejected by the daily eighty nine and uh, getting shoved back down below all major moving averages. In fact, yesterday we had a couple. Uh, we've had a couple of tests of the twenty one exponential moving average right over here. You know, as long as you're using that as resistance, not good. I think what I was playing around with on that idea is having a trend line right here and saying and seeing okay so above this this was your bull trap as long as we're below this area you know it is it uh, doesn't look good but again it needs to just close below here so it's the same thing it's you can see it potentially happening but what if you get a nice wick up over here first well that's why it's not good to be too aggressive right now. It's best to be saving uh, the account margin and uh, and waiting for the big play. So that's kind of what I'm looking at um, on this guy. And overall, you know, same sort of thing as Mr. Bitcoin. Uh, very corrective price action down around here. And if we go to our higher time frames, you have a extremely nasty bearish engulfing dildo on the weekly over here. We are already below the 10 simple moving average on the weekly as well. This is likely to have fall through. Very rarely do you see a bearish engulfing or a bullish engulfing not get followed up with some more, you know, in that direction, um, especially on especially on a higher time frame. I mean, a, a daily, a, a daily, extremely high probability and a weekly even more so. So again, you do have the same thing on Mr. Bitcoin, right? It's the same thing on Mr. Bitcoin is a bearish engulfing dildo right over here taking out the high of the prior yeah just by about twenty dollars and then ending much lower um so looking at mr bitcoin over here I, I guess we can stay here for just a second as uh we talk about oops let's go over to the 200 simple overall you know bitcoin basically just playing between the 200 simple and 200 exponential 
I do not, I, I believe the the phase of the market cycle, cycle that we're in, while I am bearish and looking for new lows, just like traditional markets, I don't think it's happening anytime soon. In fact, looking at this guy, you can see that there's really no reason to, to be looking for those new lows until the 200 simple moving average, this red line breaks over here. Uh, and that should be that should be some tough shit to, to chew through. Bitcoin has actually technically never broken it in its history. Um, but that's also kind of a testament to the fact that how young Bitcoin is, right? Because you need at least 200 weeks to even put one tick on a 200 uh you know period moving average right so again while i do think that that over time it breaks you know the keyword being over time right uh that would essentially be you know our impetus for 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 uh for for, for looking at this next uh, blue box territory right over here 2300 to 2600 also the 886 Fibonacci retracement which is actually where you did bottom out in 2014 and some nice historical uh, horizontal trend lines and also some some nice heavy uh heavy thick af volume nodes high high value nodes right over here and if we go to the blx index and look at the weekly the three seven seven is actually coming in right around this range the uh the the uh the blue moving average which is like an extremely important one yeah coming in right around here you can even line it up with uh with your higher volume node um so again you know looking at this guy yeah there 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 are certainly a lot of things pointing down there but again it needs to you know first things first before anything else happens 3250 needs to break on a higher time frame now going back to our conversation right over here and looking at this and taking off the silly volume profile. Don't want to be looking at that right now, but looking at this as a symmetrical triangle right over here, right? A symmetrical triangle. And we looked at the measure move on this guy, right? Which was pointing you all the way down around this range over here. Well, that would be pointing you where exactly to about 3250, which is exactly where that 200 simple moving average is on the weekly. So if we actually just extend this guy out and notice that this has been governing our lower highs, well, what are we actually potentially forming? Again, we only have one, two, three-ish. Well, two, uh, yeah, I'd say about two-ish touches on the bottom support trend line. And perhaps, you know, if this measure move does get hit, it bounces again off the 200 simple. Well, then you have three touches, you have a trend line. And now what, what would we be essentially working on? Well, a descending triangle, which Bitcoin loves triangles. I love triangles too. They just seem to play out pretty damn well. Uh, but we but we had a massive descending triangle at the 6,000 level over here. Uh, as far as patterns go, I'm not a big pattern trader. I don't really like trading patterns. In fact, I see most people get that wrong. And most people, you know, it's it's... It's just patterns are the most easy thing to see and easy thing to call out. So a lot of times they'll get painted so uh, so you can generate uh, you know liquidity for the bigger accounts as they want to get their fills, making everyone get extremely uh, you know extremely bearish when it's time to be bullish and extremely bullish when it's trying to be, when it's trying to be bearish. Um, you know, and the descending triangles have a great psychological aspect to them as you know everyone gets where did everyone get extremely bullish? Well, right over here. It's going back to 5,500. It's going back to 5,000. It's going back to fuck. <laughs> Russia's going to save this. <laughs> it's like, no. Um, again, as long as we're kind of oscillating in this area and being governed by this, it's just another lower high. And the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And a year's over a year's worth of trend. Well, it's been a very good friend recently. In fact, all you had to do for the last year is just get short and essentially wait. Just like during a bull market, BTFD is great. It's a great strategy. Well, I mean, it's not a great strategy, but it's, it's a decent strategy. It's a viable strategy. It's a profitable strategy because, well, you're on the overall side of the trend. Right now, it's quite literally the opposite. So... Intel, Intel told otherwise. So that brings me to my next conversation. What am I looking for to get bullish on this uh, on this asset on, on this asset, or perhaps the better term is not bearish. Um, well, first things first. I'd want to see a higher high on the daily. That would be a good start. You haven't done that in over a year, so maybe start there. That would be the easiest one, but it's not. But it's not necess necessarily going to get you uh, get, get going to get you all the way there. Uh, the second thing and uh, pr pretty damn important and something that I'd actually put. A shit ton of weight on is uh, weekly 200 exponential moving average right over here. As long as we're both opening and closing weekly totals below there, I have absolutely no reason at all whatsoever to believe that the low is in um, and the direction overall is down to me. Now, again, it's probably going to take some time uh, to actually break onto new lows, but but uh, but if but that also means that if Bitcoin could open and close, and again, keyword open and close a weekly dildo above this 200 exponential moving average right over here, which has actually been governing all these weeks uh, all these wicks on the weekly. Uh, I would immediately change my tune and I'd probably look for a starter position to the upside. Uh, again, I do believe in Bitcoin long term. There is going to be a time and place, at least for myself, to get long or at least or at least, you know, I, I believe that I'll get the signal to get long. Um, 
and that would be one of the big things to it. But the, the third and final, although you'll probably know beforehand, but you know, just the more obvious thing, the more traditional thing is, hey, if Bitcoin can get back above 6,000 and close a higher level dildo above there, well, that would be essentially negating this the, the this breakdown phase over here. And just from a more traditional spent sense, if you spent you know a year consulting at a 6,000 level right over here and you break that down, well, to get back above there, that would essentially be saying, okay, it's time to move onwards and upwards and not certainly be looking for some long-term longs at that point. Um, again, you'll probably know beforehand and, uh, and I'll probably take positions beforehand, but that would be like the, the final nail in the coffin, um, for the bears. But as you can see right now, none of those three things being hit, of course, there's other things to look at, but those are, th I think those are like the three most easily and readily, um, digested things to, to be looking for. And they'll get you most, or at least they'll, uh, they'll, they'll get me most of the way there. Anyways, go check out the longs and shorts of it all. Uh, Bitcoin longs at a little bit above 30,000 right now. Bitcoin shorts at 23,000. We have four and a half thousand of those shorts are really hedged so a little bit under 19,000 open shorts uh neither one is really paying any sort of an interest rate so that's not really of a concern it's only when it gets to like 0.05 percent and higher where it's like an actual you know deal i mean th this this is quite literally just you know free 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 longs and free shorts right now is what they're saying as far as interest rates go um more importantly though and what i would like to look at for a second over here is the uh, is the shorts on finex we are in a danger zone anytime that bitcoin gets to the low 20,000s or, or especially below 20,000 on shorts um on, on open shorts that actually does match up with major dumps i mean th this spike down over here this was your january dump this was your february dump this was your August dump. This was the break of 6,000 right over here in November. And we are once again approaching these sort of critical levels. But as you can see, it is, it, it's, it's the highest kind of spike to, uh, to the downside so far. So it's, it's not necessarily quite just there. Um, but it's on the radar, you know, the lower and lower that this gets, the more and more likely that, you know, it suggests that we could have a major breakdown, essentially saying that, bears have plenty of dry ammo to go in dry if they want, you know, if they so desire. So that's what I'm looking at right over here. Longs, on the other hand, um, a little bit, uh, th this is something I don't put am as much weight on, but the fact that longs are back below the, this sort of trend line right here, which again, it's not a trend line, it's just I have it in there because anytime that Bitcoin gets above that area, it lines up with the major dumps too, once once it gets above and then ticks back below, if that makes sense. So, so you know, this area over here, it should be on the radar, then once it ticks back below, that's the actual point where things get, to get a little bit nastier. Same thing over here, this is, you know, this is your March, this is your April, this is your or, you know, July, uh, and this is your December, and um, we actually just spiked up there once again. So coming back down, you know, again, less clunky, and with the overall price of Bitcoin being, you know, nominally lower, remember, these are measured in coins traded, so it's not like, it's not as useful, really, but but it is interesting nonetheless, so it is worth talking about, um, but I don't put as much weight on it. Anyways, get on over here to, let's let's go look at Mr. Ripples, actually. Uh, Mr. Nipples over here, 32.7 uh, 32 cents. Let's go to three-day. Have we taken out the level that is the most important to take out? Nope. Even with yesterday's rally, not even getting to formally test 34.5 cent. Uh, again, three-day to a death cross right over here. As long as you're below the 21, I am bearish on this. And this is what, oh, this is, again, rounding out the discussion on why I'm not, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily looking at Bitcoin as like, wow, that was the low. You know, when you when you look at like Ripples and the other altcoins, they don't look too healthy right now. In fact, Rip, Ripple's a little bit on on the less healthy side. I mean, you know, it's it's not like it's not like retracing its whole fucking you know rallies for for its whole life. I mean, that's those coins aren't even worth talking about in my opinion. It's, that's such a bad sign. <laughs> It's such a bad sign, but uh, but 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 for Ripple, um, as far as like this time frames go over here, don't really see too much holding up from you know the the, the lower twenty eight cent area right over here. But again, gonna take some time. This three day dildo uh, at the current moment in time, printing a Doji ish type dildo could be a sign of indecision, perhaps even reversal. But as long as you're below thirty four and a half cent from you know this resistance trend line, actually best seen on the three on the three day and, and a more traditional area of uh, basically the twenty one over here. I'm still pretty damn bearish on this guy uh just gonna take its time i mean it's, it's operating below all major moving averages right now it's looking pretty weak uh same thing for mr stellar over here uh again i don't i mean just taking everything off we do have a now a full-on signal uh, the three-day dollar death cross has happened we are operating below the 377 ancient technology moving averages right over here and what are you creating right now you're creating that beautiful or very nasty m formation which m is for murder and uh does this thing start to get murdered now well 
as long as you're below as long as you're below 11 cents i would be extremely bearish on this as long as you're below the 21 exponential moving average right over here which is currently around you know 13 and a half cents i'd be overall bearish on this but i'd be more immediately bearish as long as you're below this this 11 cent region right over here basically kind of this this former support which now seems to be acting as resistance so again you actually do see the same thing uh on bitcoin on like a two day um which i think i forgot to show but overall um what do we have over here i need to get rid of these this is not too, this the, the, these were just lower time frame ideas that I don't put too much weight on and it's not really too relevant to our to our general conversation uh, but if you are looking at this as the dreaded M formation well do we have any sort of great measure move to be making well it is it would actually be pointing us down to our former lows at this uh, nine cent region overall though you know another break of this well we could just adjust it for the three day another break of this guy right over here though and uh, high single digits is the next destination it looks like overall uh, you know this bull trap over here in confluence with breaking the overall support of this um of, of, of this consolidation getting retested right over here and rejected it's it's not good i don't see what people are seeing on this this is a pattern of distribution right here especially when you zoom on in i mean look at look at the volume characters of this a very nasty rejection that's your highest volume dildo right there and then uh and then just following through on that uh still you know a few you know still like one or two ticks away from fully confirming but it's it's the same thing as bitcoin on a two day right and this is also why to me, it, it looks like short is the play in that same sort of area on Bitcoin today would be right here at about 30, actually right, right, right below 3,700. But again, this is on a closing dildo basis. You can get a wick above, but as long as that is rejected, like you got over here, um, you know, the the more immediate direction is down. This also means that, you know, going off going off this current dildo that we're working on, which is a fresh dildo, it's got it's got another two days of life before it gets set in stone. We know we could very easily get a wake up all, all the way to 3,800, 3,750, and then close down. That would be the that would be the beautiful signal. I don't know if Bitcoin makes it that easy. Typically things are not that easy, but my God, if that were to happen, that's the dream play right now. Or the potential dream dream play. Of course, I'm making a lot of assumptions about price action, but looking at everything and starting to put them put the puzzle pieces together there is a lot of things lining up right now so these are typically the trades that i that i'm happy to wait for because you don't need to find too many of them per year to make a living um so yeah anyways uh i think we've talked enough about bitcoin uh oh well, let's go check out gbdc forgot about that guy right over there yeah gbdc right over here um still still in the formation of a bear flag right still in the formation of a bear flag but more importantly on the lower time frames this one also does look like wants to rally a little bit you do have a nice gap in price action right at this four dollars and 66 six, uh, cent region right over here we did reclaim the 21 exponential on this guy but uh you know overall this is a bearish pattern the the volume characters do work out as a, as being a bearish pattern uh, especially with kind of a failed breakout right over here that's typically you know typically <laughs> not going to operate pretty damn well um but uh but hey do we have another run up into this region right over here would that come into confluence with bitcoin you know making it to 3750 3800 actually that would make a lot of sense it would make a lot of sense so again um one of those things where you know it's it's showing its face it's showing its face but <laughs> is it quite there just yet mm, not necessarily not necessarily so as always you know you got to uh you, you gotta you gotta shake out the over aggressive over leveraged traders in in exchange for um well <laughs> the big trade the, the the big trade to be made and that's just you know it's just it's just a beautiful um truth of the market that a lot of the times you might have the right idea on the actual direction the overall direction but a small move well, if that gets you out, you are that over leveraged trader that, that the bigger accounts are hunting out. I mean, that quite literally is who they're going for. So I understand that as a fact of the market. Um, okay, let's go over and check out SPY. Closing the day down, I think, uh, sorry, not I think, but I know it has closed the day down. It did confirm itself, um, but still not breaking this range just yet. Technically speaking, it is in an ascending triangle. I think best seen on maybe like a 30 minute. Yeah, it, it is an ascending triangle, but I, I like I said yesterday, I think this does break down. Uh, the volume characters on this are, are are suggesting that a move is is imminent is not just imminent but like it's coming baby it is coming um Technically speaking, if 257 breaks and we close like an hourly dildo below there, then yes, then 254 and a half is the next area that I start looking towards. If that area breaks and I start looking towards about 251, I, my, my opinion is that one of those areas is likely going to reaccumulate and then we're going to try a little bit higher. So this is, again, a very delicate thing to say because it's the same thing as Bitcoin, right? 
I am overall bearish on this, looking for new lows, but it's gonna take a long time, like a long time. And when I say a long time, I mean like months. You have so many people trying to short this area, you know, all the way up and they're just getting fucking wrecked left, right and center, which, you know, that's, again, let it be a truth of the market that <laughs> if, you, if you are an emotional player, you are the exact target for bigger accounts to fuck with because, well, you won't be able to hang handle these swings. I mean, not only that, but I hope that we've been pretty damn uh, clear in stating that there's no no real reason to be short coming off of this right over here. It's the same thing as when Bitcoin got to the 200 simple. I was talking about, yes, I am overall bearish, but I'm closing shorts now. And I think that the play, the, the, the big play, just like Bitcoin, is going to show itself relatively soon, but it's not quite there just yet. I, I would not be surprised if we drop a little bit lower or, you know, maybe it's 254 and a half, maybe it's 250 and a half, 250 or something like that. But uh, I'd be I'd love to see the obvious and clear signal right back at the monthly 21, somewhere around this uh, 261 ish area, which would also be the neckline of this head and shoulders reversal pattern right over here. It would just be so beautiful if that happened. If I if I got that, you know, I would take a position again. And I don't even trade traditional markets anymore. But uh, uh, but but the other way that I take a position if, is if the 200 exponential moving average breaks over here at around 239. Right now, you can see that you know the setup is there, getting a lot of nasty exponential moving average crosses. But uh, just like everything else, it's not it's it's not going to be it's 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 not going to be nice to the over aggressive traders. So. Again, uh, you can see that this. You can see that this bounce is already getting. You know, the volume is fading on this. It's, it's not. You know, it's not good. But traditional markets do take uh, quite a bit longer than Mr. Bitcoin to play out. Uh, if you're making a relation between them too, so. Again, um, I think that's it for I think that's it for spy. I mean, of course, while you are still in the formation of technically a bullish pattern over here, which you know it's it's technically an ascending triangle. Again, I don't believe that this breaks to the upside, but if it were to break to the upside, the measure move on this baby is actually pointing you directly to 262, 262 ish, which would put you right around that area that I just spoke about. So whichever way that it does break, it you know it doesn't matter to me. It's I mean it doesn't matter to me because I'm not fucking training to begin with, but the the overall trade that I'd be looking for is the same, you know, and, and that doesn't mean it's going to 100% work out. I mean, you know, even with these more, with, with, with these more powerful ones, you know, sometimes they don't work out, but it's a pretty fucking high probability. I would say that pretty, pretty fucking high probability enough for me to, you know, put some risk on. Um, so yeah, anyways, let's get, on, let's get back on over to Mr. Bitcoins over here, two, six, uh, 36, 62 and a half on BitMexico. Uh, not too much else to report on the lower time frames. Again, Mm, if we, you know, if, if you really want to shut, if you really want to force something over here, this is what I'd be saying. I'd be saying, you know, you got some sort of a rising resistance going along over here. Could we have another spike up to this area? I mean, this, this does rise over time, right? So it would be getting to that 3750 ish area, you know, at some point, um, it doesn't give you the obvious play in doing that. Maybe, maybe not. Usually marks aren't, again, usually marks aren't that, you know, nice, aren't that generous. If you do it on an hourly, it'd be coming in a little bit lower. Um, so overall, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a waiting game. If we do get that move into 3750-ish area, 3800-ish area, that would be beautiful. But uh, looking at and putting into context the fundamentals of the market right now with Mr. Buterall having an event in the next day or two, um, or sorry, I guess next day it, it would be, and uh, in looking at the patterns of distribution that we see on both Litecoin and Buterall and Stellar and something like XRP, you know, where does where does Bitcoin put in its, its potential next top? Well, that's that's the next you know that that's that's the next big question of the market so it's, it's just like when we were over here it's like okay there's going to be there's likely going to be a big play coming up is it going to be here is it going to be at at uh, 4250 is it going to be at 4550 you know i'll try to trade out at, at every potential zone and uh and let the chips fall where they may that's all you can do as a trader just search for those nice risk reward opportunities and uh manage and manage your risk more importantly so again here's what i'm thinking right now there are there uh, there are uh, there are a few trades that I'm interested in taking. Could I take another trade if we get rejected from this area right here, 3680? Sure. I don't. I don't think that that's the one that's going to work out though. But again, opinion not needed. If Bitcoin were to take out this support trend line right over here at 3600. I would take a trade off that. If Bitcoin were to get back to 3750, I would take a trade off that and I'd try, try another trade at about 3850 right over here. Whichever one happens uh, to, to, to be, uh, you know, again, it, it's about it's about managing your risk so that you have your account balance ready for that next move. Um, let's see if we put a fib on this guy. I, I know I said I was, I'd be wrapping up this video, but just one more second. I do want to see what, where this guy comes in around. Uh, fib, fib, retracement, fib retracement over here. We're actually right at the 0.5 um, after dipping below the 618. 
uh, interestingly enough, uh, are we going to be selling the 0.5? I mean, the last time we we dropped to the 618 right over here, it did rally all the way up to the to the 236. But that's your bot target right over there. Sells that down. Do we come back down to this area right over here? Pop back to the to the 0.5. A lot of the times you'll pop back to the 382. Um, if you sold the 236 and you just walk it down, but uh, again, that's why being a little bit uh, being a little bit patient here, but uh, but 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 that 382, you know, 3800 area would make sense. Anyways, um, going back to the lower time frames right over here, again, I, I think we just kind of uh, uh, tally that up. The only way that I really get bullish is, is as I said before, you know, the, the three things that I'm looking for, they are pretty well and far away from doing it. So I'm still looking for shorts. It's just a question of where is the next big one? Is it 37.50, 38.50, or are we at it right here? If, if we're at it right here, I'm probably not gonna take a position. I'll take a position if we break 3,600. That would be that would be my signal uh, for myself. This is not a signal channel. I'm not a signal provider. I'm not, I'm not anything like that. In fact, that's exactly against my sort of message and, and what I want to portray and what I want to put out into the world because you can educate yourself to how to do the to how to do this yourself that's why I have you know my programs not necessarily like a signals group because also signals groups I mean it's just, it just perpetuates the wrong mentality man you know anyone can learn how to do this if you've learned how to play a video game if you learned how to do anything at, at a high level in your life it's the same process of learning that's all it, that's all it comes down to just experience and having the right know-how um, anyways, okay, that's going to do it for this morning stream. Uh, I will be back on later with another uh, live stream later tonight. Looking forward to seeing you there. If not, well, I wish you a happy rest of your Tuesday. So take care and see you soon.